Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about what is the best VPN for torrenting. Now guys, there are a ton of options out there when it comes to choosing a VPN and that's one reason I made VPN tier list. However, specifically, you might be wondering what is the specific best VPN for torrenting? What things make that VPN best for torrenting? what you should look out for um, when not choosing a VPN for torrenting and so on. So in this video, I'm gonna break down what you should be looking for. Now guys, I am not sponsored by any VPN here on this channel, but if you wanna help support the channel and click on some of my VPNs that are my favorite products, I'll be putting links in the description down below. Those are my best VPNs for torrenting. Um, we'll discuss so, you know, why in this video, but if you click on those links, you'll get a discount and four extra free months. So let's go ahead and get into the video right now. Are you guys ever worried about getting doxxed? I know I am. That's why I use a service called Incogni. Now I've reviewed almost all the major data broker removal tools and I found that this one is the best, it's the cheapest, and it also has a really good family plan as well. If you use my link in the description down below, you should be able to get 50% off Incogni. I have not been sponsored by Incogni for some time, but they are one of my top affiliates and they're one of my favorite products here on the channel because they prevent it so you don't get doxxed it removes your information from websites so if someone does find your IRL name they won't be able to connect it to your address phone number and even your family members additionally this can also give you less robocalls since companies aren't able to find your internet just like on the um, they're not able to just find it like it's some public message board so if you guys want to help support the channel and get one of my favorite products click the link in the description down below so guys first up I'm going to be talking about the important things I'm mixing in some things that are not so important as well so guys, the number one important thing I would say is having lots of servers. Generally, picking a VPN that has the most servers, the most country supporters is a good thing for torrenting since this means no matter where you are in the world, you're going to be able to get good speeds. Crowded servers can slow down your speed significantly. Not every VPN supports 10 gigabit per second servers and you will notice the speed decrease even if you don't have 10 gigabit per second internet. So having more servers just gives you overall more flexibility, better speeds, and a better connection when downloading torrents. You really don't want your speeds affected too much by a VPN when downloading stuff because it'll just take forever and it's gonna take longer to do whatever you wanna do with those torrents. For me specifically, I get the best speeds with Surfshark and NordVPN, both these VPNs support 10 gigabit per second connections. Usually without VPN on, I get around seven to 900 megabits per second, kind of lower end on 900, more around 800. And with these VPNs, I can pretty much get the same exact speeds as I do without using VPN. If anything, five to 10% degradation of speeds is really the best you can expect with a VPN. However, some other VPNs out there I see recommended a lot for torrenting, stuff like Molvad I just reviewed on my channel. I was actually only getting around two to 300 megabits per second second, which is not ideal for torrenting. It's just going to be too slow at the end of the day. So I would say the most important thing when picking a VPN is speeds, as long as some of the other things we're going to be discussing are also part of the package. One thing I would say is not that important is port forwarding. This is something you'll see everywhere on Reddit because there's one specific subreddit called VPN Torrents that pretty much bans anyone who criticizes um, just one or two other people who make recommendations of which VPNs to use, which is pretty funny because their main kind of thing was, hey, you should only pick a VPN that has port forwarding. They recommended Molvad. It was shilled on the subreddit for probably like five to six years. And then Molvad had to delete port forwarding probably because everyone on Molvad was doing nefarious things with it and they were starting to get in trouble um so they deleted port forwarding and then everyone on the subreddit was like oh well you know it's still a good option you don't really need port forwarding um but then ivpn also deleted port forwarding which is another common recommendation so they couldn't recommend that anymore um even though some people still did and then they started recommended air vpn yes that air vpn yes the same air vpn that still does not have an ios application um 10 years later after it pretty much was created yeah, that one. That's the one they say is good to use. Mm, I don't think so. So yeah, at the end of the day, port forwarding isn't really that worthwhile. At the, is it a good feature to have? Yeah, but is it really gonna impact your speeds that much? Not really. 
Let's say in the ideal world, there was a VPN that had 111 different countries supported and it supported port forwarding. Well, unfortunately, that just does not exist. The only VPNs that really do support port forwarding nowadays are private internet access and air VPN, none of which are VPNs I really recommend using. Private internet access is probably better than air VPN, but I don't really trust the company that owns it. It hasn't really done anything interesting with the product for a number of years. And generally, besides being featured on Linus Tech Tips all the times, hasn't really done anything noteworthy. So as long as you pick a VPN with good speeds, you don't really need port forwarding. And that leads me to my second point, um, which will be a kill switch. Now, most VPNs do have kill switches, but some VPNs have an application and network kill switch, which is very handy. So it's important to look for a kill switch. However, you can even bind your IP to your torrent adapter in your Qubit torrent client, which is something you could do as well. Um, so that's also something I've featured on the channel before. So that's something you can also do. But basically the reason you wanna do this is so when you're torrenting your IP address is not exposed if there's any issues. If you bind it to your Qubit torrent network adapter, this basically assumes that if something's wrong with that adapter, the torrent file will stop or if you enable a kill switch on your VPN application, it will shut down the application or turn off your network if something is interrupting the VPN connection. So it's definitely a must have essential. Most VPNs do have this though, so that's pretty good at least. The second thing I would talk about, which is maybe not as important, which people on Reddit and other things will tell you, saying, hey, don't use a VPN that collects website analytics. Now, some VPNs out there like Molvad, iVPN, maybe even something like TorGuard, they use more like open source analytics, like Matamo analytics. They're not really using like third-party platforms that are more robust um, to collect information on the users. They're just kind of using their own kind of self-hosted options to um, collect information on their users. Um, so at the end of the day, is this really a big deal if you're torrenting? Well, not really, since you're gonna be using the VPN application, not spending all your time on the website. Most VPNs who have website analytics that are tracking you on their website are mostly doing so to optimize their website, to create better um, ways for them to make more money and stuff like this. It's not really actually that big of a deal. If you would be willing to sacrifice something like speed, for example, if you wanted to use Molvad, um, you, need, you would have less website analytics tracking you on their website if you wanna spend all your time on their website. But again, you're sacrificing that speed. Um, the VPNs that have this kind of analytic tracking on their website um, just make more money overall. They are able to optimize their websites better and stuff like that. And they're able to buy more servers and thus you get better speed. So you kind of probably see where I'm going with this. Probably one of the most important things though, um, when it comes to choosing a VPN, when it comes to torrenting, is picking a VPN that has no history of giving away logs. Now, most of the major VPN providers um, don't really have this issue, but there have been instances in the past of a couple of VPNs kind of having issues. Um, but if you choose a VPN that has not been sharing data with third parties, um, that's definitely important. But it's also kind of important to think about other security issues and vulnerabilities and stuff like that. Um, there have been some issues of some VPNs like Winscribe being called out um, from, you know, hackers saying the code is not very robust. It's not very secure. Um, you've seen other kind of VPNs also have similar issues. So at the end of the day, um, considering logs and stuff like that and security is definitely important. But this can be something that takes a while to research since a lot of VPNs go back a long time. Um, so that's something to think about. Lastly, one thing you might not want to consider as that important is being open source. Now, a lot of VPNs like Movad, iVPN, a couple other VPNs out there, kind of like Proton, they advertise that they're so much more privacy friendly because they're open source. However, at the end of the day, all the VPNs use the same protocol. It's called WireGuard. It's open source. It's designed by Jason Donafield, and it's a core protocol that all VPNs pretty much use, and it's the same protocol. Whether the entire VPN app is open source or not isn't really that important for your security when torrenting. Generally, if the VPN performs well with speeds and stuff like that, um, I would suggest having an application that's more stable, has more features and so on, than prioritizing stuff like open source. Two other things that are important, I would say when choosing a VPN for torrenting is picking a VPN that has a good long-term deal. Some VPNs like Molvad are very cheap upfront for around $5 a month, but after two or three years, you're gonna be realizing that you just paid $180 just to have a thing that protects your IP while torrenting. I don't think I would do that. 
Instead, I would pay around $90 for two or three years, and that way you'll save a lot of money and you'll get the best speeds to boot. Additionally, if you use a service like Revolut if you're in the EU or privacy.com if you're in the United States to kind of um, put restrictions on that subscription. So after those two years, you don't get charged more depending on what the deal is after that deal. Um, you could just kind of do this and then every two years um, you will be able to get a good deal. Um, that's definitely the best way to save the most money. Or you can kind of add up subscription time of VPNs. So definitely you can do this. I looked it up, kind of did a little more research just to make sure this. It's called stacking subscriptions and you can buy a new subscription before your current one ends to kind of extend that deal going forward. And that's probably what I would advise you to do. So guys, that kind of wraps up this video. If you're wondering, as I kind of mentioned vaguely in the beginning, which VPN I recommend, I'll be putting those in the description down below. Primarily NordVPN is my go-to right now. One of the reasons is that it also has a SOX5 proxy, which means you can kind of plug and play in the application queue BitTorrent, which is really nice. You don't even have to turn VPN on. Outside of that though, they have 111 different countries with plenty of support wherever you are in the world for getting good speeds. I get amazing speeds with them. They have two kill switches, an application and network kill switch they have um, a no log policy they've done um, privacy audits there hasn't really been any questions about the security of their code they're very fast they have really good long-term deals and they have plenty of apps on every platform no matter which platform you're on so definitely a very solid choice anyways guys thanks for checking out this video and i'll see you again very soon